Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast, episode 796, getting close to 800. Uh, we got to do something for that 800th episode. I'm um, the host, of course, Surreal Gerald Quinn, uh, not to, not discussing the world of sports, but doing some heavy pop culture as we talk about season five, the final season, episode five, Insecure surviving okay um dramatic episode uh it was uh you know depending on it was a bit of a i mean i it depends on who it depends on you know type of individual you are could have been uh perceived as a tear jerker um uh, but a very dramatic episode back to the podcast after a week sabbatical queen queen returns Come on, sabbatical. Not sabbatical. Come on, sabbatical. <laughs> you know, it wasn't sabbatical. Like, it wasn't we, needed, sabbatical. we actually needed a mental health break. So this is very uh, fitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say 796? Yes, we on this is this is the 796 wow. episode of the Real Deal podcast all together. That so. is what's up. It sounds like I'm gonna be with you for 800. Okay. You might. You might. We gotta depending celebrate. How, we gotta depending, celebrate. Depending on how how it turns how it winds down when how it turns out, you might be on seven. You might be on 800. <laughs> nice, nice. But um, yeah, this episode. Um, first of all, <laughs> before we get into this episode. We got to deal with the, uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait, because we we're going to talk about those two uh, in the next little segment. I, I'll even say, I, I'll wait to turn to the previous episode. So, Molly, we begin with Molly. Uh, the episode starts right away with uh, Molly in the midst of um, having sex. Uh, um, she, he, um, Right at the climax, she gets a phone. She gets some phone. Uh, her phone goes off, or she's missed. She's she missed messages. I don't think she missed calls. She might have. She missed calls and messages. Yeah, she missed calls. It was, it was yeah. very urgent, and she realizes that uh, her dad's trying to call. She immediately um, doesn't even change clothes, as we saw in the hospital. This is the, the dress they called it. Uh, <laughs> people on, on the internet and the you know powers that be. Well, she even said. Uh, or, or Issa said it during the episode of the, the fuck em dress. <laughs> she wore that. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, wore, dress. she wore that to the hospital. Um, mm. And understandably, I mean, it's, it, was, it was a mercy. She uh, felt that it was mercy. It turned out to be a big mercy as uh, her mother uh, had a massive had a, uh, a massive stroke that, uh, that rendered her unresponsive um in you know critical condition to say the least and now molly's world gets completely just turned upside down from the highest of highs to the now lowest, <laughs> the lowest of lows just in, in in one swoop um we'll get into the best we'll get into the scenes but uh what were your thoughts on how the episode opened and how it just went from you know you go from uh, a great moment in her great moment all of a sudden to boom getting hit with that uh you know getting hit with a upper you know with a, with a knockout blow um mm-hmm. a right you know a right hook in terms of her mother being having a stroke and by the way are you so we we kind of called this right then we call this couple yeah i was just about to say we, we i was just about it. to say um, i, I thought it, something real was gonna happen yeah we, you, we called this uh i thought it was i it thought grown up now okay yeah I thought it would be her dad, but I think it makes perfect sense mm. that it's her mom. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I, that's when I was watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, this was it. I mean, we, I know we have been talking about Kelly for a minute, mm-hmm. but this was it. Like, I think now we're saying that they, they're grown ups and they have to deal with grown up things rather than just, you know, I mean, I guess relationships and stuff, of course, are grown up things, but, um, but like when you throw in things like death and you know um what was it their estate and all of that kind of stuff you know those are really grown up grown up things so um yeah i think we got knocked right into that and like i guess what friendship means in these moments you know friendship and support yeah we'll 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 get to that in, in terms of the best scenes but um yeah molly you know 
again, on this, you know, Molly was really having a great time this season, per se, up until that moment. She's going through this kind of uh, transformation. She cuts her hair. Uh, things seem to have been going fine at work. Uh, her, you know, she's really digging. She's really, you know, doing the work on herself with the with the meditation and uh, and things of that nature. Checking herself, you know, when we talk when in past episodes when she was talking about yeah, I was going through the when she was going through the day naps. You know, I was doing too much and. So she was in a great, seemingly in a good place. Things, you know, the last previous episode, she, you know, had two dudes chasing her and got into the uh, the Jason Derulo concert when nobody else did. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so my, Molly was in a nice living. Place. She was living. She was living her best mm-hmm. life. And then all of a sudden, like you said, life hits. And, you know, we'll see. I mean, we'll uh, later on in the episode, um, Issa will say something, uh, you know, poignant that makes that made perfect sense. In one of the best, in one of the be- uh, best scenes, um, in terms of how things can just happen out of nowhere, but now she gets hit, you know, she gets hit and gets hit hard, and I guess it's, I, I guess they made, I, I give the writers credit because it, it made more sense for it to be her mom because her dad, her and her dad don't have really a great relationship. It's cordial at best. Yeah. So it made yeah, more sense yeah. for it to be her mom because now you have to you have to deal with your dad on a, on another level. On a, you have well, to, and I, yeah, and I think like we've been seeing the relationship with her mom. Like you know, her mom has been wanting all these things for her, for her to get into a relationship and get married and have kids and all of that. And so now, and I guess you know, Molly. Right, like what was it? A couple episodes ago, when the mom was trying to hook her up with the, the church dude. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like you see, you know, her mom has all, is making all these efforts, and Molly's kind of like, "Mom, chill with all that, you know, whatever." But now that's all she wants to do. So it's so it's, it's again, it's a reality check, you know. So, um, and you even hear her say that in the episode, like, I, you know, what if she never sees me walk down the aisle, or you know what I mean? So. Yeah. So we go from that to uh, Issa and Nathan. Now, here, here's what I'm going to get to. So mm-hmm. the Nathan uh, part of this, um, they they are together. Um, they stand, uh, she, she spends the night at his place. I think, I think that was his place. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He brings her, you know, coffee or wet oranges. I think it was coffee, whatever. So they're getting along. Um, there were a lot of people in the previous episode. I wasn't one of them until this, until I watched this episode. Then I was like, okay, this is what I guess people that was pissing people off. There are a lot of people after the last episode who were just not feeling the Nathan storyline or the character. Mm-hmm. They, they wanted no part of Nathan in this last mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they did a great job last episode with the mental health. I thought the scene with him and yeah. his, him and his cousin was was heavy. That was a heavy scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, and basically, they're saying, "I, you know, look, man, I, you know, I had to look out for my family, and y'all, you was just, yeah. I, you were, you were too unpredictable. They didn't even know about yeah. him and the wife didn't even know about his cousin. Him and his cousin's wife didn't even know about the mental health issues that he had. Um, yeah. I was fine with the Nathan, you know, part of the. Uh, Nathan's his, his character and what have you, and you know him, him, him and Issa. I predicted. Now I predicted at the end of the last episode that, that it's not gonna work out because these two are just. Mm-hmm. Not, just <laughs> it seems like a there's no chemistry. Like, yeah, there's it's no, it's not, it's no real, no, it's no chemistry in there. It seems like a relationship of convenience for both of them. Mm. Uh, to be honest, mm. um, and That's I think good. they got, and I think they both, I think they, I think they're they're too similar. They got some similar, they have similar, they have a couple similar traits that just not going to mix. But to my original, mm. to my original point about the backlash that was received on the internet and in various articles, did you, are you not, what were your thoughts on that? How, how Nathan's character is being developed this season? Yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't been looking at too much social media in regards to him. But, I mean, come on, all of us Team Lawrence. We don't want to see Nathan. We want Lawrence. You know what I mean? So I think it's tough on that end um, for us to get in, you know, get into this 
liking of Nathan. But um, I think kind of like what they did that season that he came on, like they're starting to peel away layers of him so that we're starting to learn a little bit more about him. Right. So like, like you said, last episode, when him and the cousin had that moment, like clearly there's still a lot of mystery behind Nathan. Um, yep. So I think as we continue to watch, we're going to start to learn again, learn more and more about Nathan. And I, and, and I think not only us, but Issa is going to understand more and how, how they're related, not how they're related, um, just how they connect. And like you said, I don't see the chemistry between them two. Even with me being Team Lawrence, I don't see the chemistry. Um, it's very just friend based, you know. Like if they seem like really good buddies. Yeah, yeah. It it there's. I don't see the. I I, I don't. I just don't see it. I I don't see mm -hmm. the um just the, the the connection that two people who are in love have or two people who are supposedly in love would have. I I, I don't. And I, I don't, and by the way, I don't, I'm not an anti Nathan. Uh, person, <laughs> I'm not anti Nathan. Character's cool. Yeah. Actor, you know, actor does a good, you know, does a nice job. Um, so it's not mm -hmm. like a certain character you just be like, all right, I just don't like this character. I, you know, whatever. <laughs> but he's not. He's not one of them. I, I, I don't like. I, I was giving. I was giving them props last episode for going all out. You know, have after a, a, what a mini earthquake still trying to keep the party going. <laughs> uh, but then you really want having having the bar having the barber. Barbershop pay for the drinks. So I like that's that dude really went went on his way to uh you know want people to have a good time. So I I respect right. that. Um, but I, I think that they ultimately you don't buy them, and I think people are frustrated. I think that's what the heart of people's frustration. We we as an audience don't buy them as a couple. So why are you wasting time yeah. with the storyline? That that is mm -hmm. the gist of hey, there's more Lawrence or you know more. Mm -hmm so on and so on but yeah basically you want more lawrence and you know we'll get to this yep we'll get to lawrence at the uh end of this podcast because there was some lawrence um there was <laughs> there was some lawrence a uh, lawrence appearance <laughs> let's get the best scenes speaking of nathan and isa isa on the park bench after uh after they found flavor flav flavor flav flavor flav flavor flav <laughs> 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 After they find Flavor Flav, or he or he finds them, they did actually didn't find them. He just and uh, he just he was basically, he's basically the Doogie Howser of dogs. Like this dog, prodigy, can work the microwave. That's some I, 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 that that would be that bullshit. No dog work the microwave. I would have to see that. Come on, now. all right, we get it. The dog is smart. We get it. Man. Come on. <laughs> so the dog finds them, and then you know Issa has basically tells him, you know. I couldn't have did this day without you. Uh, this is after they've been together for the entire day. He's spoken to her mom. They've had that mm -hmm. interaction, which was hilarious. Shout, shout out to Wendy Bacall Robinson. Um, she does. She always does her thing with playing Issa's mom. Um, mm -hmm. So they've gone through the whole day together. Huh? That was a shout out to HU. Shout out to HU. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, she, oh, she went to, I didn't know she went to Howard. Right. She sure did. Okay. I did not oh, know. Well, Hampton, Howard had a lot of a lot of actors and actresses. He do. A lot okay. of performers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got one on. We speaking of one right now. Performer. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. The arts. <laughs> hey, you stand up. Um. Yeah. So she he comes out. No, she comes out and says, "I love you." And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like that classic movie. I love you. It was just kind of like. She just kind of like tried to one of those I one of those sneak it by I love yous like mm -hmm. like you know I'm gonna say it real quick and keep it moving. Um, he doesn't he basically doesn't respond. He, he there was no response um, other than like a kiss on the forehead. Mm -hmm. I believe. Um, what were your thoughts on that? So funny thing, I must have been drinking too much because I don't think I remember that part. Was this when they were, were on the park bench? Yes, they were, park bench, yes. they were on the park bench and she said, I love you, eh? Mm. Huh. Gotta go watch it again. That was actually a big and, scene. But I think this goes back to my point. There's nothing there with them. Right. You know, like for me to miss that, it, it was just very weird. Oh, and then they went in for a kiss. 
I know what she's talking about now. See, yeah, yeah, that flew over my head. That flew over my head because it was nothing. Um, like I said, I think she, both of, like you, I think I agree with you, what you said earlier. I think they're good for each other in the moment right now for everything that they're going through, you know? Yes. Yeah, and they're, it, it feels very forced, you know? Not in a bad way, but just like, I love you, friend. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. No, I, like, no, uh, it's, it was, it was very, it felt, it felt awkward. And I, I get, mm-hmm. I, I want to say that if you, when you tell someone you love them, that it's not supposed to feel awkward. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, no, it's, no. It's supposed to feel kind of natural and kind of. Convincing. You feel yeah, convincing. convincing. Yes. It's like, I should, <laughs> should, should be convincing. <laughs> uh, I, uh, by the way, uh, I love you. No, that's, yeah, that's what, it, yeah, that's what yeah. it was. That's exactly yeah. what it was. And that's, that's yeah. why I think he, I think, and I think it threw him off. I think he was like, uh, I don't even think he, I, I don't even think he completely buys relationship myself. I don't think he does, mm. he does, to be honest with you. I think he, there's emotional, there is a emotional need that she is feeling for him. And I think mm. they both, I think they both, that's something they, they both are similar. They both are very, they both are insecure, number one. Oh, come on. Both of them. They both are very uh-huh. insecure. They both want to be liked. Um, they want people, they are, they both are in, in, a, in a sense, him more than her. I think he, people pleasers. Mm-hmm. Like uh-huh. after that tsunami or not the tsunami, after that earthquake, party's over. Earthquake. <laughs> Party's yeah. over. I'm like, yo, man, it's a wrap. It's just shit wasn't yeah. meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I yeah. appreciate y'all, home. but I'm, right. yeah, man, time to go. Time to go home. Like, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not gonna say, hey, we're gonna make it move to another spot and then have the drinks on the barbershop. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. nah, yeah. nah, homie. Or, or at best, maybe a couple, maybe I'll take it back to my crib and I call a couple close, close friends to come over, but not the general, not they. Not that wasn't the general public, but that was basically was friends of friends of friends. Like, nah, son, it would have been a wrap. We just had an earthquake. Mm. I'm, I'm traumatized. Mm. So yeah, I think he he wants to. I, I think they both want to be liked, and I think they both are people pleasers. Mm. I think that they just. I think he's using her not in a bad sense. I just because I, I think he's gen, I think he's a genuine nice guy, but I think that he she's feeling an emotional need. For him. Oh, that's, totally. That's not. That's but she's insane. also feeling a void. Either, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're both. They're both feeling voids. Like she doesn't want to be. Mm. She doesn't want to be alone. I don't think she. Issa doesn't want to be alone yeah. either. Uh, yeah. That point. And also, yeah. I, also, I also believe that he, that she, you know, her being with him. Um, in her mind, we know, and we know it's not true. I guess she might also feel that this might make her help her get over Lawrence quicker, but we all know, yeah. we know that, but we know it's not, that's not the case. But. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that was a, that, that was one of the better scenes. Uh, Molly and Issa literally changing clothes at the hospital. Uh, they're literally <laughs> the, friends the, do. the epitome of friendship. I will give you the literally off my back. Um, yeah, literally. Very uh, a touching scene. Uh, what were what were your thoughts on that scene? Oh, that's totally me and my bestie. Like anything you need, I got this. You know, um, simple as that. As simple as that. Like anything you need, I got you. Any time, any place, I'm gonna be there by any means necessary. Like that's what friends do. So I thought that was nice. I am still feeling weird though, and I don't know if it's just me or I'm still feeling like. And I find myself watching it, like, get over it. They already, you know, established that they've moved on, you know. But I'm still, like, hanging on to that last episode, last scene from um, last season of just, like, them still talking it out, you know. And so now they just made up. Like, nah, I really, you know, as a a female that has been through a girl breakup, like a friend breakup, you know, like, I want I want to see what that transition is. And I guess perhaps, and maybe it's just me being stingy with the show and because I love the show, I want to see more. Like, I feel like I'm so invested in their lives and these characters, right? Um, the first, first episode really did show that. 
like their awkwardness and you know whatever but um but yeah I mean like now you're starting to see like them they're they're them being genuine friends you know um and again I think those real world uh, real world real life issues happening um is continuing to bring them closer yeah, I thought that I, I was all in on their relationship in this episode. I thought this is the mm-hmm. first episode in, for the entire season. This is amazingly told by so fast. It's five episodes. We're five episodes mm. in. We are halfway mm. halfway through the season. Mm-hmm. Already. I can't take it. Um, this, uh. is, this was really the first episode I felt that they were all, they were basically 100% back to the original friendship. Yeah. I thought that they it was genuine it was nothing that was forced uh close off your back whatever you know that everything was it i I thought they were back thought they were completely back in terms of their relationship um and i thought that it i think there was i think the writers absolutely absolutely were intentional with this that it would take something like this to give off to give the perception that they're completely back like my mom has to be on her basically her deathbed uh, fighting for a life and you being there for me uh, to give that to to uh, bring them that to bring them together uh, not it wasn't not you know a, a cook out the beach or going to the club or no that's not not enough it, it had to take something like this uh, to completely bring them back so this was the first episode yeah. I thought about that day like that I was like yeah they're, they're back they're completely mm-hmm. back. But I, I get to your point. I was not buying it the first couple of episodes of the season, even mm-hmm. when they were staying over each other. She's staying in Molly's house and saying best friend. And I was like, yeah, nah, nah. It's something. There's still some, some, the elephant is still in the room. Uh, nah, I was that in episodes. The first, I, that, they literally was the second episode. The first episode was the reunion. But the second episode, when they were doing that, I was like, nah, nah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, uh, this is not, um, I'm not buying this uh, at all uh, from the standpoint, but I think at this point that they are completely, uh, that they are back. The family at the hospital, um, this was a multitude of scenes uh, and I loved it. I I loved it because it like tragedy, (laughs) tragedy can bring out character of of who people (laughs) really are and how annoying (laughs) family members can be. Um, yeah, you got you got the aunt saying, asking the doctor, I cough like this this morning, and then I cough like this. This does this, this mean I got cancer. Yep. I like I was like, yo. you got the brothers, you got the brothers said, you know, you got the brothers said that the last thing I told mom was the potato salad wasn't her best, and it, I, I like, and then dad over being overwhelmed, the doctor's just asking him basic question and he's like, I don't know, I don't know. I, 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 da, 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 can we do this later? Like, bro, no, this is important. This, this is information that might save your wife's life. You know, we can't right. do this later. But I, everything, I, they, I thought they did a great job at showing what, what a black family could look like in a hospital. It, it, okay. it can be, it, and, and then you it's toss in- colorful. Yeah, it can be a lot, mm-hmm. very colorful. Then you toss in the fact that they had the, the wrong body at first, the wrong body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was corny, corny, cute, funny. Sure, corny, it yeah, worked. it was. It did happen, but, but how about watching the other family come in and then their face? And then the brother was like, It was uh, a whole us moment. The he feathers. Said, it was a whole us moment. <laughs> he said, The brother was like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry for your almost loss. <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, incoming right. family. Right. But um, yeah, the family, I mean, basically, the family at the hospital was like, with with dad being, it basically was like, hey, Molly, you basically saw that Molly is the one in that family. Like she's going to, catch, she's carrying the weight. She's going to be dealing with the affairs. She's going to be dealing with uh, stuff that her dad is overwhelmed by. So it's going to be that Molly is going to be the anchor, uh, uh-huh. really, really the anchor in a real way uh, moving forward. And that's a lot. That's a lot on one person. Um, What are your thoughts on this, on those, on those multitude of scenes? Well, you know, it's interesting uh, because Molly in this situation is, uh, it's very, um, 
uh, it mirrors my life a little bit, you know, where, you know, I lost my mom and I have the two brothers and I felt the same way. Like I had to take care of not only my, my dad, but the brothers, I became like the matriarch, you know, not the matriarch, right. but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, yeah. I felt like as the only girl that this was my job. And so I saw so much of myself and Molly in that, in, in these scenes, um, or this episode, because she feels like she has to be that one. She's not only, you know, the the on, the only girl, but she's the most educated, the most successful, you know, right. whatever. And I probably think making the most money. This, probably, well, without a doubt, making the most Maybe money. Yes. So, so you know, like I think she's putting all of this pressure on herself, and so it's going to be interesting to see one what happens to the mother and what that does to Molly. Because at a certain point, and I, I say this again, like relating to my own experience, um, that it was humbling, like just chill out, you know, because they're human beings too and they've lived their lives and they can figure it out on their own. You know, like it doesn't have to be you that has all of the answers. So I, it, it'll be interesting to see like how this unfolds and what this does for her and her character. Um, because I, I honestly think that is something that she needs right now is to just kind of just chill out. A couple of things. Um, so the final scene at the hospital with uh, Molly and the family was um, obviously they find out after all the, the tests have been taken, the CT scans that have been taken, they found out that the more than likely that the, the mother was going to be is going to be paralyzed. It, it was a nice little test that they yeah. showed. They show they so they cut they they show as they as they cutting back into that scene, they show a wheelchair and then they, mm -hmm. they get the news when the doctor gives Molly the news when the rest of the family was getting coffee and something mm -hmm. whatever. She so she, it was her it was only her and the mother in the room. So they did they did wheelchair and then Molly and then Molly and the doctor and the, and the doctor says it was a you know the, the stroke was very aggressive. She's looking at more than likely paralysis. So I I don't think that that the mother's going to die. I just no. Think I just don't think yeah. she's never she's just never gonna be the same. Like we we don't we won't hear her. I don't envision her speaking. Like we won't hear her any more more speaking parts for that mm. actress. I think it will. I think we will. It's TV, so I think we will. We need drama. We need dramatic effect. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, don't know. I, could, I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, I I I think that she. Um, I don't know. It depends on what they want to do with Molly in terms of what they are. I mean, the scenes already been shot, yeah. but I like to me this is this is like Molly going down a you know a dark road with Molly, so to speak. Uh, it's like hmm. um, from a standpoint of this is a lot, and even at the job, you saw she takes a phone call from uh, one of the partners or whatever. The, uh -huh. dude, that, the dude that she I can't say him. You know, but yeah, I know you, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of people don't like him. Not too shy, <laughs> like a lot of people don't like him, but they. You know, they we know they've had some past issues in the past, and he basically is like, "Yo, uh, what about this briefing for a particular case and what have you?" Her Molly's part of it. Molly's like, "Look, I told my assistant I have some personal issues I had to deal with," and he was just like, yeah. "Well, you know, basically, basically, but I, basically, <laughs> like, fuck your personal issues uh, right. to get done ASAP." So I wonder if if, if this is going to cause conflict in her job moving forward. As she's eh. just trying trying to deal with a lot uh, yeah. right now that's on her plate. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Molly shares her regrets with Issa. This is that scene. Um, there, Molly's really, you know, she's. I mean, she's really. This is after. This is right after the news that her mom could be paralyzed, and she's mm -hmm. saying all these things to Issa, saying, you know, what if I, you know, what if I. Well, she doesn't see me getting married. She wanted mm -hmm. grandkids. I didn't take enough of her phone calls, so mm -hmm. on and so on. And Issa basically says, "Look, you know, shit happens in life that we just can't prepare for. Uh, right. and we have no control over." And there, and I, I found that very appropriate considering the next scene. <laughs> uh, with mm. Issa. Uh, it was, yeah, great, great writing. Uh, great writing from that standpoint. Uh, what were your thoughts as those two? You know continue to like connect and you know really be there for each other yeah i think it's it's gross you know they're talking about again things that they probably weren't talking about just a couple of years ago when they go into the club and you know doing whatever like i think 
they're starting to gain perspective, you know, um, and gain perspective in a different way, you know, uh, and these are good things. And so, like you said, then it starts, with, then it goes right into that next scene. And it's like, wow, um, not only perspective, but reality. Again, we keep saying this word reality, but this is what's happening. Like, this is real life. And these are real issues that you have to deal with. And I think it's having, it's causing them to reflect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's been, so there's been a lot of introspective and a lot of reflection throughout the course of this season so far. I mean, it started out even the season, uh, episode one, with Issa mm -hmm. and her reflecting on her life and her choices and, and things, of that things of that nature. Kelly, with everything that's going on with her, um, mm -hmm. even with Nathan and his mental health, uh, I, I mm -hmm. think that I, I definitely think that the writers have been intentional uh, with having these characters look look deep within their own souls um, to try yeah. to figure figure shit out, uh, mm -hmm. basically. And I I, found, I I think that's one of the things I've loved about this uh, partic this particular season, just mm -hmm. the introspect introspection. And uh, to your point about perspective, that if there was a theme of this episode, it, it would be perspective. You know what? Mm -hmm. What is what is really important? You mm -hmm. know, when you get all that when you know when we when it all comes comes down to it. Um, yeah, and I think like it goes back. You hit it on the head earlier when you were like um, when we were talking about Issa and Nathan and how they both feel so insecure. And of course, that's very you know pun intended, but. <laughs> um, yeah, I think everybody just feels like they have no security right now. You know, nothing is, is stable. Everybody's like, you know, in a constant earthquake. <laughs> yeah, no. So, yeah, I like, it's funny that you say that last episode, we had the two earthquakes, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, they were sending a message. That episode was sending mm -hmm. a message that something big was going to happen. And of course, this this is this was it. Um, this was the big, you know, this was the big one, so to speak, uh, in the moral words of uh, Fred Sanford, Fred G. Sanford. Mm -hmm. this, you know, I, I thought that, I thought that, I thought this episode, that episode, last episode kind of really perfectly set up this episode. We had yeah. you know, two minor earthquakes and it's like, okay, all right, we good now, but nah, something, yeah. something big is coming. coming. Mm, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, this, mm. this definitely doesn't uh, surprise me. We get to the last scene, um, and I thought that this was this this scene right here is going to have some serious ramifications moving forward. Issa's mm -hmm. getting, getting getting some coffee, um, a lot of coffee, yeah, a lot of coffee runs in this episode, mm -hmm. um, and she so happens to be in the same hospital. Go figure out in Los Angeles, out of <laughs> city with ten million people, eight million people that they what are the, what are, what are the odds? <laughs> and she was led to Lawrence, Condola, and baby Elijah Mustafa. Mustafa. And Elijah Mustafa, who looked like looked like he gotten gotten bigger. I can't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Issa Condola is obviously, you know, seemingly was happy uh, picking up Mustafa. Uh, <laughs> and you see Lawrence, who just looks Lawrence looked kind of sad. Lawrence did not look happy. He looked tired. Lawrence, he looked sad Lawrence, and sad. Yeah, Lawrence did not look happy at all. He did not look like an excited first time father. Um, mm. And then Issa, Issa, I thought initially that she was going to see them and then kind of duck out without seeing them. Mm. But nah, uh, her, Lord, her, 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 her Lawrence lock eyes and uh. Uh, what could have been. We could, we saw, we saw the what could have been. Like, uh, I can only imagine what's going through her mind saying that that should have been my baby and I should be with you and so on and so on. So that is a very, that was a very perfect way to end the episode. It was going to set us on a course for the next, I think, couple of episodes uh, with this whole, with this Lawrence Condola and Issa and, and baby Elijah and this whole dynamic uh, with these characters. Uh, what were your thoughts on how the episode ended? Perfect. Perfect. That's the moment where I was like, oh, what's going to happen? I love these moments because, again, you talk about chemistry. 
like you're just waiting to see what happens like uh, yeah every single moment and this has literally been this way since season one you know every time you see them interact it's like what's gonna happen and so um I thought it was great I thought also like this also shows you the power of acting and the power of not n- not having any words you know yes. like yes. um and how no words it can just mean so much because you also s- see her you know make that contact with him and then there's like a some kind of settle in her face you know and with him uh it's just a, it's, it's great and then you see her walk off you see her walk away but she doesn't go and she's seriously like contemplating like does she go back and say something or you know it's just uh i just i can't i need to see what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah I, I love acting and i love the i love the idea of, of no words i love the, the body language the eye contact that is the best to me that that, that is the best acting, you know, that's really when you see the talent uh, of these characters, of these actors and actresses and what have you, because mm-hmm. to be able to express, to give off that expression, to be, able to, to be able to read what they're thinking and what you know, what you think they're thinking without, mm-hmm. any, without any dialogue, it is very, uh, it just shows the skill level that that, 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 that you're dealing with when, uh, when it comes to mm-hmm. some of these performers. And both Jay Ellis and Issa Rae, you know, were tremendous. Like they, uh, you can tell the the chemistry between them as actors uh, is strong. That's you know, that's five years worth or whatever. I have a long show, even even longer than that. Cause the show has been on has been on longer through uh, had a couple of hiatus. So however long they've been shooting, six or seven years, uh, all those takes and all those scenes that they've done together, that that all comes out to fruition. Uh, in a scene like that, and, and, and it's a payoff in that, in, in all these years, in all these seasons uh, of this show. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that there definitely will be uh, a conversation. Uh, I've heard she's not just going to walk away. And again, I could see that part of the story carrying a couple episodes, not just one episode, but maybe even two episodes. Um, if I were to make a prediction, but that there's that that's definitely going to be that that to me definitely that's definitely going to be a, a conversation. Again, I don't think I still I, and I, I will stick by this until I see otherwise. I still don't see Issa and Lawrence ending up together. I don't. I, I, I know. I, I, I know I, you don't. I, yeah. I don't. I, I will still. I will stand by this. I just don't. Hmm. I just don't <laughs> see it. I, I don't see it. it's going. I I think. Yeah. I don't see this show going for the fairy tale ending. I just don't see. I I, I think the writing is too sophisticated. Uh, they're too yeah. smart. Um, I, I think they're really going to be dealing with like real life, like you said. We saw with the mom with like real life shit. Like that. I I don't see the the fluffy you know stuff. I I don't see any of that stuff happening. I really don't. I think. I mean, I think we saw we saw we've seen with Issa and and Molly just pure friendship. We've seen that. Uh-huh. Kelly's going to be Kelly. Uh, certain characters are going to be certain characters, but I don't see, I mean, they're going to, you know, certain characters like the girl, <laughs> she was hilarious last year, uh, last week, Risha, they're going to be, you know, characters like that who are just, mm-hmm. you know, crazy and goofy and whatever. That's going to be, you know, that's just television, but I don't, the the whole, you know, fairy tale ending, this where everything ends up wraps up. Yeah. Like, oh, no. Yeah. I just don't think the show's going to do that. I, I think the writing no. is the writing is too good. The writing is too good. Yeah. And I, I think there's going to be some a lot of unanswered questions and some conflict that ends mm-hmm. um, that ends this uh, this series. Who was your mm-hmm. se- who was your season? Not season, excuse me. Who was your episode? MVP. MVP. Yeah. I was thinking about this. Uh, you know, as I was watching, I was thinking about this too. Um I was going to say Molly. I was because that's kind of like the the obvious. But I think Nathan for me. Mm, interesting. Why? Yeah. Um, because I think Nathan, I know we talked about Nathan and Issa really trying. Like, I feel like Nathan is just really trying. Like, he's just trying to 
you know, and he's like, he's letting a lot of things pass. Like I know we saw in the other episode where, you know, she just broke down in the middle of their intimate moment and he was like, nah, I can't do this or whatever and left. But it's just, it's something about how he's trying. And even like that, I get, that was getting on my nerves this episode too, where she's like, you know, you don't have to come back and get mad. It's the classic girl thing, but you know, He's just like she no. Really want, she really wanted him to come back and get her. To be honest, like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I just, I don't know. It seems like he's he's trying, but I think us looking from the outside, we know what's going to happen, you know. And so, um, I gotta give him the MVP because he's he's just kind of like sticking in there, you know. He's trying to see, um. I think he's looking for something that he needs, remember? So, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed his performance this this episode. No, he, I mean, he did a nice job. Uh, I thought about him after Molly. Um, I also thought the dad was good. I thought I thought Molly's dad was good, too. That, whoever that yeah, he was good. He was I, good. Was, I, I thought he was pretty good. He was good. Uh, not enough in the MVP, but I thought that particularly. I thought nah. he was good. I thought he had a strong performance. Um, yeah, I think with Nathan, he, he definitely stepped up um, in this episode. I mean, definitely was you know being there for Issa, trying to because that's a tough spot. Like we, this these are multiple. This is this is really the second time. Really, every his all his scenes, not all his scenes, but a lot of his scenes with Issa with Issa have been awkward when you think about it. The time uh-huh. in bed, you know, the earthquake at the beach party, uh, and now you know you you're, you're thrust into a situation where you're dealing with, you know, her friend's mother, you know, being you know severely ill. Uh, it's a tough spot. He's in. He's been in these uh-huh. tough predicaments, and I think that all things considered, he's probably handled it as well as you could possibly handle it. To be uh-huh. honest. So I can I can definitely understand uh, him being the MVP from that from that standpoint. I had Molly. I just thought Yvonne Orji was great in this episode. Um, just yeah. with the regret and the whole, just kind of you know having to look within, and she's, uh, you know, she goes from to, to the sexy, and she goes from that goes from that to being she's telling the dude uh, stop talking. <laughs> Like, that, was, that was funny. She told me to stop talking. <laughs> she goes, oh, stop talking. Let <laughs> me stop, stop, stop talking right now. <laughs> and then he sends her a text in the in the hospital, which is hilarious. Um, yeah. I thought I thought she yeah I thought she had to uh, she in essence she in essence had to carry this episode. And I think that's a that's a very difficult thing for an actor uh, for an actor to do in a show like this. That's basically an ensemble cast. I know that Issa Rae is the star and creator, but it's still for the most part an ensemble. Uh, or deal with the cast, uh, but I thought I, I definitely I thought that Molly, for the most part, carried carried this episode, and um, yeah, I had her as my uh, MVP. Hmm. Uh, no Kelly, okay. no Tiffany in this episode. <laughs> I even mentioned it. Not needed. Know? Yeah, not, not needed. needed. No, not needed. Uh-uh. Not needed. And we talked about Flavor Flav. Um, yeah, that was. That. I thought. I actually thought they wasn't gonna find him. I actually thought that was just gonna be like. <laughs> nah, I knew they was gonna find him. You Oops. know, and shout out to uh, Carrie Washington. I thought she yes, directed yes, this episode. Yes, Carrie Washington uh, uh, directed this. Excuse me, directed this episode. Yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I actually thought you know there were some directing choices that was kind of weak, but as we got through the episode. Like? Who did I not like? As a director in you know, this season. I don't know. I don't I can't remember because they got some new ones on there. So I'm not sure. But it was just some I you know what I didn't really care for was the the strolling scenes of Molly and Nathan. Like they were really like, Y'all are not looking for this dog this low. So I mean, and I get what was happening. We were um trying to learn or hear more about their dialogue like we wanted their dialogue more but um the direction in those scenes were kind of like eh, they're walking slow <laughs> yeah 
know. Yeah, yeah Kerry Washington did her thing in this uh in this episode. Um and this It was and this an ending for me. Yeah, and this was this was a so you know, when you when you have a um when you have a fifth episode of a tenth of a tenth season, excuse me, a ten episode season, like a fifth you know the fifth episode is going to be a a, a powerful episode. It's pivotal. Gonna, it's, gonna, mm-hmm. it's gonna be a pivotal like yes, that's even a better word. A pivotal episode. Um so yeah, you're gonna you're gonna bring in the big guns for an episode like this. Uh, previous episodes have been directed. Melissa Mustakis, who, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who, did, who did the first episode, which I thought was strong. Then you had Mo Mo Marble, Ava Burfoski, then Mo Marble. So Mo Marble's done two episodes. So, mm, uh, they, okay. so you know this. I bought. I, I think Kerry Washington. Yeah, Kerry Washington definitely. This was a, a strong, a, a great episode in terms of directed as far as directing, without question. Um, be very interesting to see uh, the directors moving forward. I know they've had in the past; they've actually had some Jay Ellis that uh, directed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In season four, he did, matter of fact, he directed the season finale. They've had Regina King did an episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In season three, uh, so they've had some uh, notable actors and uh, people, uh, people of that ilk. Uh, for this, uh, for this show, so I'll be, I'll be very, I'm paying attention to that closely. Now that you brought that up, um, mm-hmm. in terms of who, um, who's gonna be directing this? Directing. Directing. Yeah. Or, again, it's the last season of of this show. You gotta bring in the heavy hitters. Like you got you, you're gonna see some. Oh yeah. Big Kerry Washington. If you see Kerry Washington now, mm-hmm. imagine the last five episodes. Uh, yeah. Gonna, so I I think you you're gonna see some notable people, um, moving forward. Um, obviously we're gonna see the conclusion of mm-hmm. what happened in the hospital with uh, with um, her and Kendola and, and and Lawrence. So that's that's gonna be something we're gonna see in the next episode. What are your thoughts now, moving as we head towards the second half of, of, of the last, of the season? Yeah, you know, I think next episode, it seems like it's going to dive into Nathan's, you know, um, yeah. a little more of Nathan's story. Um, and definitely, I know a lot of people appreciate the talk of mental health and everything. So right. um, it's going to dive a little bit more. And like I said, I think that's what they've been doing with his characters of peeling away layers. And so we'll continue to learn more about him. And I think as we continue to learn more about him, the us as viewers we're gonna be have more um empathy i think i think that's what they're trying to build with us um yeah so i um i don't know i don't know where it's gonna go also in the previews they had uh seems like they're gonna be bringing uh crenshaw back oh yeah i saw that i saw that yeah remember in the last that's a boy Crenshaw. <laughs> last episode, he went, you know, basically went ham on Molly, not Molly on Issa on the on social media, uh, mm-hmm. calling it out and what have you. Um, that was funny. Last, it was funny, but it was kind of strange that, that her girl, the assistant, had. Did you notice that scene? She had a nosebleed when she was talking to Issa. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. damn, is that is that like you that stressed out? <laughs> like she, <laughs> they had her like that paranoid over that. So you're gonna you're gonna see that um, coming next episode, but again, I, I expect the majority of the episode will be uh, with that uh, with Lawrence Nathan. and Nate, Lawrence and Nathan. Uh, very mm-hmm. interesting to see what they do with Kelly and Tiffany next episode. I anticipate I don't I don't think we're gonna see multiple episodes with them not being around. I think they'll they'll I think they will be back next episode, especially Kelly. Um, mm-hmm. So I. Again, they had there was another reference. Um, I, I don't know if you noticed in the last episode there was another another death reference from Kelly when she was talking to the girl. Her and Risha was you know kind of bonding. Um, so uh, again, they continued to you know push that. I so I think it, I'm basically making it obvious uh, when it does happen. Mm-hmm. But uh, very interesting to see see what they do um, with her character. So we are halfway through the season. Um, amazing again five this. The season is flying by already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. The, like me, even better. It is going. It is flying by, but definitely looking forward to it. Uh, Queen Quinn, 
Well, welcome back. Yo. Welcome back. 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 She's back. back. She is back. Uh, we will see Happy to be here. We will see you next time. Thanks for, again. Thanks for joining uh, joining me and joining the uh, podcast. And we look forward to the next uh, next episode of Insecure, episode six. Right on. All right, friends. Everybody, have a great great rest of your week. Have a happy Turkey Day. Um, enjoy your friends, family. I know a lot of people doing these friendsgivings. Do that as well if you know if that's your thing. I will see you next time on the next next edition of the Real Deal Podcast.